Hello friends, it is Danny, and today I am going to be reviewing It's Not Like It's a Secret by Misa Sugira. This book follows an Asian American teenage character named Sana and she has just found out that her family is going to be moving from Wisconsin where she's grown up to California. There's an ongoing speculation from Sana for the longest time that her father is having an affair. Then when she's in California she ends up making a new group of friends who she didn't expect to be friends with. She ends up meeting this girl named Jamie at Bed Bath & Beyond where Jamie works and then realizes that she actually goes to school with this girl so she joins the cross-country team to try and get closer to this girl and starts to kind of question whether or not she likes girls. In this book it features a lot of different issues like the subjects of racism and cheating also brings up the topic of poetry a lot because the two main characters Jamie and Sana both like poetry a lot and it plays a role and so now I'm gonna get into my thoughts about it because that's really the only good description I can give <laughs> I wish I could say that I love this book I feel like it's another Ramona blue when I told Hannah that I didn't really like this book as much as I thought I would she was like, oh no, not another boom on a blue, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know why I've been struggling lately with LGBT books. I've been reading a lot of them, and only two out of the few that I've been reading have been five stars, and two have been three stars. This wasn't one of the five star reads, and I'm gonna talk about how I feel about this. There is Insta Love, and we know we all hate Insta Love. It's like, she sees this girl once, at Bed Bath & Beyond, she's fixated by her, she immediately freaks out when she realizes she goes to the same school as this girl and automatically tries to get to know her and it doesn't feel like there's any emotional attraction between them, it's all physical attraction, which I don't know if it's just me, but I believe in an emotional attraction to somebody as well as a physical attraction. As soon as Jamie was introduced, it was insta-love. So, like I said, racism plays a big role in this. Her mom is very old school in the sense that she has the very old traditional beliefs that Japanese people once believed. She thinks that being gay is a freak. She thinks that Mexicans are lazy. She thinks all of these racist things. And she doesn't realize that what she is saying is racist. And I understand that that's how some people are, but like, I wasn't expecting it. The poetry idea to me was cute until Sana starts breaking down poems that I've never read and that aren't featured in this book at all in a poetry journal that she's supposed to be doing for class. And although it fits with the theme of the book, like how she, her and Jamie's relationship is built off of poetry, at the same time I was kind of really bored with the poetry journal entries so I just skipped over them. I also kind of wish that the poetry pieces that she was talking about were included and not just little snippets from that poem because you don't really know what the whole poem is saying even though she's analyzing it. There is a language barrier that I felt throughout the entire book. Her mother, like I said, is Japanese so she speaks a lot of Japanese to Sana and although Sana understands it, I don't. So there would be a part where her mother would say something in Japanese and you kind of have to struggle through the content around that Japanese saying that her mom's speaking and try and figure out what she's saying. There are other books out there that have that language barrier, but then the surrounding content kind of explains it better than this one did, or even does a translation right beside. There was also the language barrier when Sana was meeting Jamie's mom, because Jamie's mom is Latina, and she was speaking in Spanish, and Sana didn't know what she was saying, and we don't know what she was saying at all. There, obviously, is cheating in this book. It is right on the back of this book that her father is having an affair on her mother and Sana's trying to deal with that so there's obviously cheating there there's also some other cheating and I do not feel like it is okay to try and justify cheating regardless of if the other person is cheating cheating is wrong cheating is not supposed to be a two-way street where if she's cheating then he's cheating and it's okay because it's not and because there is so much going on in this book there are so many different themes elements the racism the LGBT-ness of the book and all of the other issues that Sana is going through I feel like there was almost too much going on and that the author was trying a little too hard to get everything in there and some of the things weren't even needed and I flew through the first half of the book I was done the first half of the book in three four days 
if that. The second half of the book seemed to drag on for almost a week and I think it was just because Sana was so unable to make decisions for herself and she made a lot of wrong choices but they, it took her forever and she just kept dwelling on the same problems even though the problems weren't really prevalent. There were other things she should have been worried about that she wasn't worried about and other things that she shouldn't be worried about that she was worried about. Marketed as to all the boys I've loved before meets Simon versus a homo sapiens agenda and I kind of agree with that but at the same time I don't. <laughs> So the fact that I had all of these issues with this book made me mark the book down to three stars, but even that's pushing it because I just felt really let down by this book. That is it for this review, you guys. Comment down below if you've read this book and have other opinions on it or how you felt about this book or even if you haven't read this book and you plan to. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts. That is it and I will see you guys in my next video.